the ambition, get ahead and in control of the decision making. And after I figured that out, I promised myself and I promised my wife that I would never ever do that again. And I'm not going to. So for all the people who have been in this race, who have put their own personal ambition ahead of what's right, they will ultimately have to answer the same questions that I had to answer after my decision in 2016. Those questions don't ever leave. In fact, they're really stubborn. They stay. And so I know how I'm answering those questions. I've never believed that Donald Trump was a foregone conclusion as our nominee in this race. And I knew that the case had to be made against him. Now, there are people in our party who are resigned to the fact that he was going to be the nominee, resigned with the fact that the case didn't even need to be made because it would be a waste of time. They sat on the sidelines and all they did was voice their opposition in private, behind closed doors, quietly, so no one could hear. And that's not leadership, everybody. That's cowardice. It's cowardice and it's hypocrisy. As a party, we need to be willing to take the responsibility for the part we've played in getting here. Our country is angry, it's divided, it's accomplishing little, and it is leading our citizens to be exhausted. And you just look at what's happening just in the last few days. Good people who got into politics, I believe, for the right reasons. People like Senator John Barrasso, people like Congressman Tom Emmer, stand up and endorse Donald Trump. They know better. I know they know better. People who continue to deny the results of the 2020 election. People in leadership in the House who go on TV and say that the people who attacked the Capitol on January 6th are hostages. I'll tell you who hostages are. The Israelis who are still being hidden in tunnels in Gaza against their will, out of no fault of their own. These people speak louder for the folks who attacked our Capitol on January 6th than they are willing to stand up and speak for the people of Israel who are in tunnels in Gaza. That's not leadership. That's ambition and cowardice which has outstripped their otherwise good judgment. We wanna change this party and if we wanna change this country, it's hard work. It's not easy. From the moment I got into the race, the decision that I made was really simple. I would rather lose by telling the truth than lie in order to win. And I feel no differently today because this is a fight for the soul of our party and the soul of our country. Why have we resisted the calls to drop out of this race? Because unlike some of the other candidates, we're fighting for something bigger than ourselves. We're fighting for something bigger than self-interest. We're fighting for something bigger than the next title. I've got plenty of titles. I have enough titles to last me the rest of my life. U.S. Attorney, Governor, Husband, Father, son, brother. I have enough titles to last me for the rest of my life. We're fighting for something bigger. It is something that conventional wisdom thinkers just can't possibly understand. And so they've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, because of some polls that I should drop out of the race, that I should get out for that reason. The smallness of the campaigns, who spend more time 
arguing and worrying about who should get out of the race than they have spent going after the front runner. They spend all their time saying, oh, Christie should get out, Scott should get out, Pence should get out, Hutchinson should get out, Bergham should get out. They and their donors have a different target every day to try to minimize the attention to their own campaign. How their own campaign is a campaign that doesn't play to win. It's a campaign that plays to not offend. The problems in our country, the divisions and influx at our border, the problems with our enormous debt, the failures of our education system, all of those things and much more will not be solved by people who are too afraid to talk about what the real problems are. If we ever have a hope of restoring this party to be a governing party of principles, we have to be willing to do the hard work and take some of the heat that comes with it. We have candidates in this race who have run away from forums where they were afraid they were gonna be booed. I run into the forums where I know I'm gonna be booed because being booed for telling the truth is a badge of honor. I'm proud of everything we've said and done so far. And I'm proud of all the people who have supported us and are willing to do what needs to be done to restore the soul of our country. See, because in the end, all those issues that we've talked about at all the town halls, they're all really important, but they're no more important than the most important issue, and that is the character of the candidate. You don't know what's gonna come across the next president's desk. You think you can predict it, but you can't. No one asked George W. Bush or Al Gore what they would do if four airliners were hijacked and flown into symbols of American power and killing thousands of Americans. No one asked them that in New Hampshire in 2000. But I was glad we had a man of character sitting behind the desk in the Oval Office when that attack came, because I knew George Bush would do everything he needed to do to protect this country and its people and put them first, not himself first. Imagine just for a moment if 9-11 had happened with Donald Trump behind the desk. The first thing he would have done was run to the bunker to protect himself. He would have put himself first before this country. And anyone who is unwilling to say that he is unfit to be president of the United States is unfit themselves to be president of the United States. Campaigns are run to win. That's why we do them. I see the chairman here in New Hampshire. He knows we run campaigns to win. My goal has never been to be just a voice against the hate and the division and the selfishness of what our party has become under Donald Trump. It's also been to win the nomination and defeat Joe Biden and restore our party and our country to a new place of hope and optimism in this country. I've always said that if there came a point in time in this race where I couldn't see a path to accomplishing that goal, that I would get out. And it's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path for me to win the nomination, which is why I'm suspending my campaign tonight for President of the United States. I know, and I can see it from some of the faces here, that I'm disappointing some people by doing this. People who believe in our message and believe in what we've been doing. I also know, though, it's the right thing for me to do. Because I wanna promise you this, I am gonna make sure that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be President of the United States again.